So this right here is my latest mower purchase. Paid a hundred bucks for this. It's a Craftsman DLS 3500. Under the hood, it's got a 20 horse Intec single. And just got it home. Haven't done anything to it yet. The biggest reason they were selling this was, I don't know what they did, but they lost the steering wheel. Luckily, I have a spare one. Well, it came off an LT1000, but I'm going to make it fit this. They changed the seat on this, along with a bypass the seat switch in probably the strangest way I've ever seen. And just told me the should run, but he took the gas tank out. Gas tank's right there for it. And turns over and it looks like that belt, something's still engaging. Belt's turning. And again, too, I mean, the, the brake isn't set, so that's probably what's causing it. But we'll see if we can get it running. It's got plenty of oil on the dipstick. And I'm gonna throw a battery in real quick. Never came with a key. Luckily, I have an extra key, so I'm just gonna throw a battery in, set the brake, hit the key, and see what happens. used one. Let's give it a crank and see if this at least turns over. Got another starter issue. Alright, I gotta, I gotta get this shroud off. Did you catch it? Rookie mistake. I hooked the battery up backwards. So I just need to reverse these cables. Hopefully it'll make the starter turn in the correct direction. All right, let's try this again. Now that works a heck of a lot better when the battery is on the correct way. So here's something common that I find with these Briggs engines. This is that fuel solenoid for the carburetor. 
sticky. I'm going to have to lube it some. And this one's probably going to need a carb clean. The gas smells quite old. So that fuel solenoid. Been lubing it a while now. Now if I hit the key on. It now works as it should. Could it be this simple? Could it be just as simple as a stuck fuel solenoid? Well, we'll have to find out. So what I'm going to do right now, obviously off camera, I jerk the deck off. Next in real good shape, no holes. It just has you no know, flake and paint. The bearings do sound a bit on the dry side. Well, I shouldn't say just a bit. They do sound quite dry. So I'll have to either replace bearings or repack them full of grease. It also looks like I gotta do some deck leveling on this too. What I'm gonna look into first is I'm gonna replace the steering shaft. I've got this one out of an LT1000 and then I got that steering wheel right there that came out of an LT1000. I'm gonna try to retrofit and make it work with this. I would film it, except it's gonna be dark and there isn't gonna be much for you to see. So, wish me luck. All right, since I can't show you underneath the machine, I'll give you a better view. So what holds this in is this pin. It just slips right in the hole you gotta pull the pin out, and then this just drops right underneath the machine. Which if you look at my setup, you'll see that the shaft steering rod is sitting right on the ground. So I'm gonna have to either plop this tractor on its side or jack it up and maybe there'll be enough room to slide it out. Probably not, but we'll see what happens. So there, here's what I've had to do to make it to this point. I had to cut two and three quarters off the length of this rod. This is the original one that came with the tractor. See, I've had to grind it down, drill a hole in it, and now I can take the piece that mates with the wheel, slips right in, and then I can slip a bolt through. Now, I just got to get it back on that. All right, I got the new steering wheel installed. Perfectly fits. Had to do some modifications to the, the wheel itself, but I got it so it fits. And now we're at a new problem. The steering itself is seized. So I'm gonna have to do some looking just to see what's going on with this. It could be that rack and pinion gear system it could i've also seen these uh, you know the front axles i've seen those seize on as well so i'll figure it out so for sure it's the rack and pinion sector plate i'm gonna have to take the bolt off lube it up throw it back on all right let's put some attention to this deck now the bearings are quite dry. This one's got the blade brake hold in it. If you, can, if you can hear that, you'll hear that the bearings are quite dry. Plus this blade is bent too.
All right, the deck is cleaned up. I got the decal and the blade brakes taped over. Time to spray some paint. There, that's, that's a good first coat. All right, all I'm gonna do is just replace the blade that was bent. I had this blade in stock already. I know they're not exactly the same blade, but it'll work. All right, it's time to put the tank in. Right about, wow, it really works. I ought to do that more often. It'll save me more time in the future. So now that the mower deck is on, the next thing I'm gonna tackle is leveling it. And if you can probably see, this deck is way out of adjustment. So, um, you can adjust these by, there's a bolt right here. You loosen it to lower the deck, you tighten it to raise it. And then if you need to adjust it, you know, uh, there's an adjustment over here too. So we're focusing on the front one I showed you. See, um, they, they have this deck so the front is higher. It's a, how these are supposed to work is the, the front has to be lower than the rear so the gauge wheels contact the ground. Got looks like three and three quarters on the back. I got four inches up front. Well, four and an eighth. That's way off. Right 
let's see if this is going to start now.